two missions without doing too many stupid things. Worst test ever! <laughs> this is so far outside of my wheelhouse. Val took out the tracking station. Hello, my name is Mike Cabin, and welcome to my KSP campaign. We got quite a few things coming at you in this episode, but what I'm looking at right now, I'm in the tracking station checking out my satellites, and well, I'm deleting some of my orbital debris. These are boosters that are uh, still in orbit. I figure if they're in low orbit, they would eventually decay anyway just like in real life even though KSP doesn't do that and well of course I'm not really doing that with my satellites so I suppose I'm not being entirely consistent there <laughs> mm, I might rethink my debris strategy uh, as I mentioned we've got some things going on in this episode a lot of stuff lately have been happening in the VAB not so much in the space plane hangar in this episode I want to change this I want to actually I got a contract to land on the helipad of the vehicle assembly building, and for that I'm going to need a VTOL, right? A vertical takeoff and landing type of craft. So with my 30-part limit on the space plane hangar still in play, I'm going to try and see if I can build something that I can fly up there. But that's going to be a little later in this episode. Uh, right now, though, I want to check on uh, how my Octo-1 that I put into a polarish orbit last episode how it's doing for science collecting it is collecting mite experiment this is from kerbalism it's the magnosity ionosphere transmission evaluation <laughs> it measures the magnetic field and i want to see how it's doing it should be doing this quietly in the background entry grasslands okay so it should be so i got all the grasslands all the water, I guess it shouldn't be too surprising that those were collected first, but it should be collecting these other ones. Let's hope it is. But right now, I want to see if I can get some heavier payloads into space. I'm not convinced I built the best booster that I could with the tools that I have. So I want to, once again, let's see here, let's put a, your you're not gonna work no I'm not I'm not falling for this again no <laughs> put you on top that's 600 kilograms wouldn't it be just oh that's way too optimistic but it's like 1200 1.2 tons but oh just for giggles why not and while you see me fumbling with this I want to thank my first patreons you'll be seeing their names coming down there at the bottom of the screen and they will be seeing this video before anybody else I think I'm gonna make that well it's not I think I am gonna make that the reward for now until I think of other things for people that support me through patreon that they will be seeing these videos before anybody else and seeing them ad free so if you're interested again just follow the link down there in the description uh, and you can be joining along with these folks and seeing these videos a little bit earlier than everybody else. In the meantime, well, yeah, I kind of abandoned this. <laughs> the, I, I, I couldn't make it any better than the Cogswell 4 that I already had that I built last episode that can lift a measly 400 kilograms into low carbon orbit. I, I really need to get some better engines. I did, however, find a mission for the Cogswell 4 that you'll be seeing a little bit later in this episode. But with all of this booster testing that I have been doing, I've really been spending too much money on simulation. So I'm not going to simulate this mission when you see it next. Uh, that'll be my first run through it. And just to sort of explain the difference between simulations, you know, people that don't play a lot with Kerbal Construction Time probably are confused when I say that. Um, Kerbal Construction Time, of course, it takes time to build something. So in order to fly something, you run a simulation through the crash mod and uh, that simulation costs you money. For these rockets that I'm doing here to do a full ascent is typically like a couple of thousand curb bucks each time I run and go all the way up to uh, into space with these things. So, you know, that can get pretty expensive pretty quick. So all I'm gonna do with this one, I just have it out here on the pad and I'm just going to make sure that the fairings deploy cleanly. All right, all I wanna do 
Fifty couple of these. All of them. Oh my god. Fifty couple. Just clearing off some space. This could easily go really badly. Um, <laughs> decouple this one. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. And decouple this one. Uh, decouple this. No, 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 no. That would be bad. Okay, let's let's just deploy the fairing. I don't know. That's <laughs> that's the worst worst test ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the heck with it. Let's get something building in the space plane hangar and see if I can not get a VTOL safely atop the vehicle assembly building. <laughs> Alright, uh, SAS on, RCS on. So these should work, right? Oh yeah, those work great. So let's turn that off for now. We're going for a level flight. I want to keep track of resources. This is, of course, simulation mode for our first flight. And what I'm trying to do here is trying to see if I can get this to just be level. I'm really oh, 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 oh more thrust, more thrust, more thrust. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We're so let's see if we can just level this off, Jeff. I really find the time it takes for those jet engines to spool up and spool down really challenging to get a feel for. I do not know how some people do this so well. I am not one of them. So, yeah, trying to get control. You can see I got some RCS happening there. So there's a small monoprop container underneath that Octo Probe Core, and obviously with a command seat on top for Jebediah, our brave pilot. I don't know if he'd get into this thing. Oh, he would get into anything. Of course he would, even if it isn't simulation mode. And I was thinking if I can keep it level, and then I could just use. RCS to direct my flight towards the helipad. I'm up clearly too high here. See if we can bring myself downwards. And to be quite frank, this really didn't go so well. I mean, it didn't, I, could, I could sort of control it. I figure what I'll do because this is something that I would normally wouldn't do if it wasn't for this contract in it. You know what, it adds some variety, I suppose, but it isn't exactly what you would call practical. So I think I'm gonna give myself permission once I do this for real to give myself a quick save and give myself uh, permission to do a number of tries. So with that, I didn't really see the point of doing more and more simulations. So. Instead, I just took this thing, I pushed it into the building queue in the space plane hangar because I got nothing else being built in the space plane hangar right now. And it's going to take five days to build. So in the meantime, we got us another ugly test vehicle. This is the one with the torch engine on it, right? And what I got to do with my contract, you saw this last episode, is I have a contract. I'll get rid of this one, there it is, is to just simply bring this up to an altitude of 140 kilometers. I have now turned the thrust off. <laughs> and in fact, another not too entirely stupid thing to do would be to actually move it out of the staging entirely so it won't get staged. So I just gotta get to go straight up, 140 kilometers, that's it. That's all this does. Well, I tried to put, you might recall, I also had a contract uh, to structural pylons also this rocket couldn't carry both nor could the a bigger rocket carry both this torch engine and the structural pylon this torch engine i really want to unlock as you can see it's a 0.625 meter part but it's quite a bit more powerful in fact if you why here why don't we launch this thing i'm talking too much uh, throttle up and go 
Uh, but if you watch that video from last episode, when this clicked on by mistake, because I activated it by mistake, um, the booster below was actually pinned to the rocket because there was provided way more thrust from this rocket than from the Cogswell from below. So it was kind of... I don't know, I found it comical. Even at the time, I found it comical. It's a, I figure if I laugh at these things, hopefully other people are laughing at these things too. Okay, that's contract complete. On to the next one. Very similar looking rocket. It's the same one you saw before with the... With the, uh... What was that? The torch engine taken off. And these structural pylons put on instead. If I really need to start banging off these contracts, making some money... Okay, and stage. There we go. Complete. That's dead. Let it tumble. Uh, clearly not going to be recovered. Yeah, might as well bolt back to the space center. Let that meet its demise. Okay. That easy. See, when you don't do things that are stupid, these contracts will be easy. So there you go. Two missions without doing too many stupid things. Is that a record? It might just well be. Yeah, I think here's something I should show people. Talking about Kerbalism. I've gone into this one, but there's a menu here for Kerbalism right there. And it allows you to monitor all of your vehicles. So these are, um, oh, ugly test vehicle number two is, m for the time being, pretty good. But you can see the icons here of what's going on. Um, there's this little icon that says that this guy's just entered into the shadow. The Staputnik 2, that was, um, yeah. I, I have no idea how the Staputnik 1 is still alive. Oh, probably because it just isn't doing anything. <laughs> the Staputnik 1 is the first thing I put into orbit. Staputnik 2 was doing some science. It is done as well. I knew it, but its batteries are dead, so it is cooked. Um... And so it's giving you information about uh, the vessels here. Octo one should be it should be just fine for a long, long time. Oh, cool. You can monitor your vessels from here. Okay. All right. Well, let's go pick up another contract to replace that one. And you know that VTOL, it's not quite done being built yet, but I don't like the way in which I left it. Let's let's get back into simulation mode and see if I can not land this thing on the helipad just once in simulation mode before I start going at it for real. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, 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 dear. she's still alive oh my gosh <laughs> someone's got to dig her out out of that rubble this experience though did get me thinking I took a closer look at the contract and noticed that there was no requirement that this thing had jet engines and if I went to rocket engines I would have way better throttle control I think this thing would be much much easier to fly of course my flight time would be dramatically less but it's not like this is a practical vehicle I'll never use it really for anything all it has to do is get from the runway onto the helipad on top of the vehicle assembly building so range isn't that big of a deal now I still am limited by my park count. I can only, this is still tier one space plane hangar. I can only do 30 parts. So I ended up losing the whole RCS idea. Actually putting spider engines on the side gave me a lot more, uh, that gives me the gimbling control and that actually really gives me much more control than what I had before. So I figured I don't need the RCS anymore and that saved quite a number of parts. And then I still had it in my head that I'm going to fly this and try and land this in simulation mode before I end up doing it outside of simulation mode just to try and make myself honest and I tried well a few simulations 
and it's still not the easiest thing. Of course, this, my flight skills <laughs> leave a little bit to be desired. I'm sure there are those of you out there that are looking at this going, I don't see why you're having so much trouble putting this thing down. Well, I am having trouble putting this thing down. <laughs> Val! That was epic! <laughs> that counts, doesn't it? <laughs> Despite not really accomplishing what the mission was, uh, I can't beat the awesomeness of that. So that was my last simulation. I did make a few modifications to the vehicle, trying to extend its flight time just a little bit, and you still will be seeing this later this episode flying outside of simulation mode. But for now, I just put it back into the building queue. So, in the space plane hangar, yeah. All right. Oh, look at my science, 49.6. I can get me a node. Oh, this is this is exciting. Now, how is that mite experiment doing? I'm very happy with that. Low space. Still more oh, it's not going to get the ice caps. I know that. Badlands. <laughs> it might take a while. <laughs> Badlands deserts. It's going to go, but it's going to be over it so briefly. And yeah, but I guess you just leave it. Not going to get ice caps. Mountains, same thing. It'll poke away at these. Northern ice shelf, it won't get. Southern ice shelf, it won't get. Shores. Okay. Oh, it hit some tundra. But it finished the grasslands, the highlands, and the waters. And that's not surprising. The rest of these will take longer. But it's doing it. That's awesome. It's very happy. Whoops. No, no, no. I can unlock a node. Why did I hit that button? unlock a node and really like I I mean there's things like basic science and stuff that's really but what do I need I need bigger rockets let's face it I need bigger rockets advanced rocketry gets me there's the torch engine that's the one I in the twitch yeah that's the one I think that's going to be really useful to me so we're going to unlock that um oh Oh, and that unlocked, I think, a new kind of science came up. Yes, the site. I've seen hints of. Anyway, how long is that going to take? I don't know. Let's go to herbalism here. Technology. Five days for that. Okay, that is exciting. Let's get to that mission that I alluded to at the beginning of this episode for our Cogswell 4 booster. This is the Octo 2 and it does have a mission. Test the air this is one. Test the 2.5 meter airstream. I got it. oh oh I got to get up to shoot 370 meter. Oh my gosh. Okay, I I okay, okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. Fine print gets me every time. Okay, well, I'm here now. I might as well go for it. I'm gonna shoot for just a low orbit to start with. Um, and then we'll try and push our apoapsis up over 370. <laughs> we'll see what it goes. What was I talking about? My record of two, two missions in a row not doing something dumb? You knew it wasn't going to last. <laughs> so I need about 200 meters per second of delta V once I've achieved my low orbit to get my apoapsis up to where I need to be. Now do remember, this rocket last episode went into an inclined, 70 degree inclined orbit with a lighter payload than this. Oh, it's not over yet. Remember, don't stage the fairing. Don't stage the fairing. Don't stage the fairing. <laughs> Old habits die hard. All right. Okay, program ended. All right, we need to get ourselves up to our apoapsis. I 
I should be fine electricity wise, right? Yeah. I have. Oh, see how this goes. A bit of a puff, and that's going to be about it. Okay, that's it. That's an orbit. 234 meters per second of delta V. You know, this might actually work. Just gonna go here. And we'll burn, that will charge up the batteries again. Of course, I never turned off my SAS. That probably is a big issue. Okay, keep her on prograde. Oh, easy. Easy. Oh, 370, dummy. <laughs> that was 37. There we go. Awesome sauce. Okay. Oh, I, I still should be able to deorbit this thing. Let's take SAS off. Because I want to make sure, at the very least, I fulfill this contract. We'll worry about science secondarily. So I gotta get up to Apoapsis without killing that battery. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to go into hibernation mode right now. But Kerbalism removes your ability to do that. Oh, I'm going... this is not good. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fail another mission because of a battery. I can't believe this. I am so depressed. <sighs> Alright. And of course now, there's nothing I can do. This thing is dead in space. So it would have worked fine. Needed one more battery. That is a really common theme with me, these, this, this series. I keep underestimating how much electricity stuff requires. I don't know how many missions I've failed because they've run out because of power issues. But it's been more than just a couple. But this straw finally put this post-it note on my computer monitor. So hopefully this will be the last one. Did I never put a battery on this thing? Well then I deserve what I get, don't I? Oh my gosh. I cannot believe I did not put a battery on you. Oh jeez. I had fuel in the can too. I could have done a normal burn, it wouldn't have affected my apoapsis and it would have given me some more electric charge, maybe save this. You melon head. How could you not... Uh, okay, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's in the past. <laughs> Alright. Okay, 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 okay. See what we got. Have uh, recondition the launch pad. Oh, advanced rocketry! That's gonna get me some new engines. And it might be good time to really try and take another crack at building that heavy lifter. Or heavier lifter. Let's not get into heavy yet. Yes, there they are. They're back. Okay, I should explain something. Kind of curious why some of these aren't. But anyway, um, you might recall last episode I was having trouble unlocking this FL-T200 tank. It turned out, uh, you can see now I have it. <laughs> it turned, oh, those are just not there because, never mind. Those are not, the other, the ones that aren't unlocked are because I, there we go. Yeah, so... <laughs> Getting back to this, um, I was having trouble unlocking this, uh, you can see now it is unlocked, and also, just a little, I didn't record this, but I was also starting to have trouble with the FL-T100 tank, and I went and I started looking, trying to find solutions to the problem, couldn't find anything, 
Uh, and ended up modifying the difficulty settings so that now parts just unlock automatically. I don't have a part cost. Uh, interestingly enough, that couldn't be done from the in-game menu. I had to actually get into the config file to do that. Um, and that solved the problem. So sort of a workaround didn't actually solve the problem. But, to be honest, from a balance perspective, I think I might be better off this way anyway, because it's, as if you've been watching any of these episodes, I'm hardly rolling in the dough in this. I've been unlocking buildings very, very slowly. I've only unlocked two buildings so far, like got them to tier two by that. So from a balance standpoint, um, not having to pay for the cost of parts might just be a better way to go anyway. Uh, anyway, we're going to take this. I want to build, let's see, I just, I'm just creating a payload right now. Uh, that guy has me 1.2 tons. What do you think? Can I get this into orbit? Let's see here. Uh, so we're going to put a decoupler on you. We're going to put some reaction wheels on you. And on I went designing this upper stage. Now, I'm not sure if you picked this up yet. You might have been noticing these cryogenic engines that I've just unlocked and frankly this seems crazy and really out of place in this particular game I mean this guy here has a vacuum thrust of 230 kilonewtons and an ISP of 425 seconds I don't even have the Reliant unlocked yet <laughs> like this is crazy out of whack from what I'm used to like down the road I'm gonna get into all of this stuff but for now I'm just removing these engines from the game we'll get back to them oh sometime in the future now this lifter is gonna focus around the torch engine with its 55 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust and that's still a significant improvement over the Spacely and Cogswell engines that you've seen so far. The torch is also a gimbaled engine, and so that will make it very, very useful. I don't need to th think, uh, it, control is not going to be an issue. What I've also unlocked now is the hammer. Yeah, we're all used to this one from the stock game, and traditionally this is an early unlock, but now, oh my gosh, this thing feels huge now. <laughs> and then I discovered something else about the hammer. down oh wait uh, the hammers are gimbaled I never knew that when did that happen is that is that new with a recent update is it a mod doing that I, I I don't know I mean they never used to be gimbaled right well geez now every engine on this booster is now gimbaled well I can certainly lose the uh, aerodynamic control surfaces. I don't need those anymore. And once I got something that looked kind of like what I wanted, I thought I'd give this a go and oh my gosh, this thing flew like a dream. It performed much more like what I'm used to from my rockets. I think I finally got the proportions between the stages the way I'm used to them being. But I think in terms of the Delta V, um, distribution between the stages. There's a lot less delta V in that upper stage, which is the way it should be. And although this is flying more the way I'm used to, it's still not quite my normal kind of a rocket. I mean, I'm still under the 18 ton limit that's on the launch pad, um, and it's still a multi-stage rocket. I, I find in the stock game, you can so often get what you need out of just single stages or two stage rockets. This is a three stage rocket. We just lost our uh, radial boosters there and now it's on the uh, another stage which is a hammer stage again, a single hammer pushing it up and then the upper stage is gonna be powered by the torch. And uh, all my rockets have been multi-stage rockets. I really kind of like that that's happening now. So uh, you gotta put a little bit more thought into building these things, but anyway. I continued to play around and I got this thing to lift a payload of 1,040 kilograms into low carbon orbit. Yes, I cracked the one ton barrier. I feel so good and I christened this the Hammer 1-R3 Torch Booster. And then I also came up with an R2 variant and it's able to lift 815 kilograms into low carbon orbit. So between these two, 
and the uh, previous striker type boosters that you've been seeing a lot of. Wow, I got a nice payload range. But right now, I really do want to get back to my VTOL. That's what I want to conclude this episode on. I had one more mission I had to fly before the VTOL. This is just to test the hammer in a suborbital trajectory. You can see it's being carried on my COG World 4 dash S6 booster. A booster that uh, probably now has become 100% obsolete, so this might be its absolute last mission. And I know that seems like a lot, but in this particular game, um, the hammers are heavy. Even this hammer, who has been emptied of its fuel, is still a relatively heavy payload compared to what I've been carrying so far. But anyway, you've seen a lot of these kind of missions before, so let's just cut to the chase. Contract complete. Let's fly ourselves a VTOL. We're going to engage all the engines and we're going to throttle up. Now it has, I can fly this for a few minutes, that's about it. So I'm going to really have about one shot at this. So we'll see how it goes. So we're going to throttle up. It does, whoa, that's too much. And then we're going to, there we go. Okay. Get this under some control. Well, why, why am I doing that? Oh, we are already off to it. Suspicious start. There we go. Okay, let's get myself under some control here. Okay, we are moving now in the right direction, a little bit more altitude. These uh, engines work so much better than the jet engines, but of course, spectacularly less ex efficient being rocket engines. gotta watch your nap ball and the way you tilt and it's controlling that vertical velocity that's really quite tricky and I know there are people that are very good at this I am absolutely not one of them all right let's get up here wow why are we still going up down Can't spend all day with this. Okay. We have to control this velocity and we are going to run out of fuel if I keep up this way. Let's, uh, like I said, we're going to try this again. All right, if I turn this to altitude above the terrain, does that terrain include the level of the, the roof of the vehicle assembly building? <laughs> it's hard to talk and fly at the same time, but it's this challenging. <laughs> This is so far outside of my wheelhouse. Cap, cap lock on. Okay, Val, come on. Oh, I do like this approach. I'll do a quick save. If I screw this up, I'll at least come back to here, which I think is a good position. Okay, well, now let's see. I got about a third of my fuel left to get this down on the helipad. Something blew up. What blew up? Can I get this? I'm assuming. Oh, they counted it! They counted it! <laughs> I'm not really on the helipad. 
But it counted. Kind of hard. What broke? I saw something blow up. I, got, I think I'm... Why was it... Why is it not sitting... Oh, I broke the landing legs. I think. I think I broke the landing legs on this side. Let's gear down. Okay. I saw something blow up, but I don't see anything that blew up. Gear back. Oh, okay. I'm going to quick save. Because I actually still have an okay amount of fuel left. I want to see... I have no idea what exploded. Because everything seems to be there. So I'm going to... I'm checking on engines too. Because if I lost an engine, obviously all the thrust is going to be asymmetric. But let's... Oh, 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 oh. Something's gone. It, something's asymmetric. What on earth? Ah, what? Ah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no! No, 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 no! No, 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 no! <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Val survived again. And you know what? I think with that, I'm gonna call it. I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.